if you're an atheist or if you're an agnostic, to listen to all of this video with the explanations, you need to understand that you cannot have some predisposed outlook on there is no God while listening to this video. Because if you do have that, I've learned that then an atheist is never going to let go of their atheistic perspective. They're, they're never going to hear me out for what I have to say because they always have that idea in the back of their mind that God does not exist. So for the purpose of this video, just for however many minutes this is, just think in your mind, there is a possibility of there being a God and then just listen to how he could exist with all these bad things happening. Other thing I gotta get out of the way too because I've seen people say this on the videos that I've watched with people explaining how the Holocaust could have happened with God you know, being real is people or the atheists who are like really radical is they're like, oh, you're, you're saying that the Holocaust wasn't bad, that God is allowing it because it's good. All right, bro. If I have to explain that, like that's crazy but I'll just say this right now I've had over four people in my ancestor history that have died in the Holocaust because on my dad's side they were Jewish back in the Czech Republic and so my great great grandparents they were killed uh, in the in the Holocaust both you know grandmother grandpa great great that is um, so I have no reason to be like oh you know not that bad no nah worst thing ever in history i mean there's so many bad things in history that you could say are like tied with it but this is at the top of the top in evil things that have ever happened so if i can explain this then like i said earlier i hope that that clears out all the other evil questions that you have so number one thing is free will okay so humans God gave us free will. As humans, we have free will to do many different things. We have the free will to do good, and we have the free will to do bad, okay? So the Nazis, they had the free will to do bad. And unfortunately, you know, they had like 30% of the vote, but there were many parties, and then, I'm not gonna go into the whole history of it, but people voted for them, and they were able to take over with their tyrannical ways and so they got into power, therefore they had the free will to orchestrate all these killings, right? God gives us free will to do these things, and he also creates unconditionally, so he's not going to stop someone from existing because he sees that they're going to do bad. If he were to do that, if you say, oh, he should have killed Hitler because he would have seen that, oh, Hitler would have done some bad, then you could also say like, well, why doesn't he kill you? You've hurt someone's feelings, you've done bad, you may have stolen before or lied, and you may be like, oh, well, this isn't on the same degree, but when you eliminate all the murderers, then what you have next is the thieves, the liars, in line as the worst of the worst of the people, right? So you can always say that God, if he was just going to not create the bad people, he wouldn't have been able to create any of us because we are all bad. So he creates unconditionally and he gives every single person the opportunity to live a good and faithful life. Like Hitler, for example, he had the opportunity to go to art school and to not choose this path. If the person just let him in, or if you know, like his circumstances were different with his family life and all that, if he was brought up in a better place and a better position, whole course of history could have been different, right? So God creates unconditionally and from there, people have the free will to do what they want to do. Now, this raises a very important question of like, well, why does God not stop these bad things from happening? This goes into the part with the faith-based system that God has. And you may look at this like, oh, well, why is this faith-based system more important than the lives of millions of people? And it, fair question once again. But at the end of the day, eternity, again, come from the perspective of like, eternity is real, paradise, heaven, hell is real. If paradise is real, and God gives us the opportunity to go there, based off of our faith in believing in Jesus Christ, then that means that we need to have faith in Jesus. If we knew for a complete 100% fact that God was real, then everyone would believe in him, right? So let's say that God showed himself to every single person. Let's say that when 
the Holocaust was just starting and the first person was about to be killed or these concentration camps with the gas chambers, let's say that they were being created and all of that. Let's say that God showed up and he destroyed it with his own hands or with all these angels, right? Then there is no possibility to deny God's existence. There is no need for faith anymore. But this is dangerous because then we run into the kind of example that I like to say with there being like a fake friend. You may have had a friend before that just uses you for the things that you have. They don't actually love you for the person that you are. So God, if he just is undoubtedly real by every single person because they see his destruction, nobody is ever going to follow him out of love, but they're going to follow him because out of just pure fear, not the fear that the Bible talks about, but out of the fear of being brutally killed by him if they lie or, you know, do any sort of bad thing at all. So there's going to be no doubt in anyone's mind that God is real. And therefore faith cannot exist. And with, without faith existing, then everyone is going to be fake with their faith in God. Everyone's going to be like, oh, I praise you, I praise you but it's not gonna be out of love, it's gonna be because they are so scared of what he is capable of doing. Just like if, let's say you have a girlfriend for six years, and you find out out of that, uh, all, all those six years, you find out that the dad, that your dad is paying her to say that she loves you, is paying her to be your girlfriend. Would you call that real love? Or would you call that forced love? That is completely forced love. The person is loving you because they benefit from it. If they're benefiting and they're only loving you because of that, that's not love. It's forced pretending of loving. So the requirements with faith to get into paradise with believing in Jesus is that you need to believe based off of his character and based off of the probabilities with the evidence, but there is never 100% evidence of Jesus Christ being the one true way. That's the thing that confuses a lot of people. When you combine everything, there's a high probability, that's why I believe that he is real, that he existed, that he is what he claimed to be. I'd also say that there's a 100% proof of God, or near, I'd say a very high probability is better what I should say. but. There's never a hundred percent certainty. And so this is really key and really important because now if Jesus and his mercy on you relies on you having faith in him and you can't have faith, then you cannot go to paradise. You cannot go to heaven. And if heaven is for eternity and the opposite is hell where you are in, in complete torment and misery for eternity, then I would say that this life, you should spend your time, if it's like a hundred years or probably less, you should spend your time trying to get to eternity. Eternity is more important than this life. So God realizes that and so he sustains his promise of the faith-based system. He comes down in the form of Jesus Christ, he didn't have to but he willfully did because of your sin and my sin, we all sin, right? And our sin separates us from God. And when we separate ourselves from God, we are showing, oh, I don't want a part of you. Because sin ultimately is going against God's commandments. His commandments keep us healthy, happy, and faithful in him. But when we go against him and sin, that's showing that we don't really want a part of him. And so he's like, all right, fair enough. You don't want a part of me? you can be away from me. And since the absence of light is darkness, that sets us in hell. If we don't wanna be a part of him, if we don't wanna be a part of these commandments that keep us happy and joyful, then we are left with sin. And what is sin? Where does sin leave us? It leaves us with eternal punishment. Not because God is forcibly making this place that's so horrible for us, but because our own sin separates us from God. And he's not going to hold you against your own will and put you with him for paradise for eternity. He's not going to do that against your will when you 
were showing him in all this time on earth that you didn't want to be a, be with him at all, right? And I know that that was a bit of a long explanation, but the whole point of it is that if he shows himself when the Holocaust is happening, if he shows himself to the world, there will be no faith. With no faith, there cannot be forgiveness because every single person is going to fake believe. They're, they're going to just be like saying, oh, I believe in you, God, and I love you, God, but it's not gonna be real love. And so God can't allow anyone into his paradise when every single person wants to be in paradise for what paradise is and not for what God is. The reason that I personally want to be with God is I want to be with Him, the character that He is. He loves me, right? I'm not going to ignore like, you know, that paradise isn't good too. Paradise is going to be amazing. But the fact of the matter is that I love God for who He is. The paradise is just a side thing that He has with it. Paradise is just the, the product of being around God because being around God and being absent from evil is what paradise is but you have to actually love God for who he is that's what the faith-based system makes sure of makes sure that you just have pure love and joy and faithfulness in who he actually is and not who he or not what he has okay so he cannot show himself and he cannot destroy these concentration camps he cannot destroy these Nazi soldiers right when they are doing these things because that messes everything up, okay? Uh, and I'm going to go into another example before we get on to the third, third and most important reason and most important explanation. Because people talk about, oh, like, you know, the slavery thing with how Moses slut out the slaves and the Red Sea crossing and all of that. That was back during a time, though, where records weren't as well kept, there still wasn't 100% evidence back then because people still said, oh, it could have been a different god, or oh, it could have been some witchcraft, or oh, you know, that could have been a natural causes of the waves just being out. So God did a miracle, yes, but not everyone believed from that, and not everyone believes today from that. So it doesn't ruin the faith-based system. So therefore, he was able to save these people, these slaves, and at the same time, he wasn't jeopardizing us going to heaven by destroying this faith-based system of Jesus Christ forgiving us uh, by us putting our faith in him now I know that that was a long explanation actually what I'll do is I'll probably put in segments uh, for this for these three pieces so that you can skip around and you probably already have but if not boom now we are going on to the third and most important reason and that is the Nova effect the Nova Effect is something that was created by, I believe the channel is like The Pursuit of Wonder. I'm pretty sure, but I'll, I'll link down his channel down below because it's honestly so amazing. And this, this was like a very good comprehensible uh, way for me to understand what God is doing. What it magnifies is that God knows more than we are ever going to know. And there's the Butterfly Effect as well, which is basically like, the series of events that happen, we cannot see, like me making this video, I cannot see what that is going to change in the future, but something big is going to change, right? God is able to see all of these different things in the course of history, so he is allowing things to happen and he is making good from the bad. The Bible makes this very clear, God can make good from the evil. He may allow evil to prevail in you know, a short term, or for a little bit, but in the end, at the end of the day, like at the, even at the end of the world, good is going to win. And that means God is going to win. And even in this world, God is going to win. So when evil is existent, okay, sure it's there, but God can turn evil into good. So one example I'll give for this is, let's say you're going to work and you're running very late, you know, you might just barely make it, and you find out right when you get in your car that you left your keys in the house. Now you're so frustrated, you're like, oh God, why me, why me? I'm running late, like I, I can't miss this, I, like will I be fired? All these things are going down in your head. Now you had the free will to leave the keys there, right? This was not God making you forget, anything like that. But the true importance with this is that 
God could have turned that bad into good. Or maybe he helped you forget that the keys were there. Maybe he like was distracting you with something else that made you forget about it. Now you may ask, well, why would God do that? Now look, little do you know that later you find out on the news that at the exact same time as you were about to leave five minutes after, there was a car crash right in the area that you would have been at. So God could have saved you from this car crash. You just didn't know that that would have happened at that time. And stuff may happen that you will never even be aware of. Like, like what could have happened is, let's say, in the same example, you never hear that a car crash would have happened, but it would have happened if you left at that exact time. God saved you from that. It seemed like it was evil. It seemed like it was bad at the time, but God turned that bad into good. So we look at something like the Holocaust, which honestly, it's such a magnified thing, right? It doesn't, it's definitely not as small as, you know, the, um, the leaving the keys in the house. But we can still use the same example because God, at the end of the day, we need to understand that if he's able to create the whole universe, which he says, the universe shows us the love that he has for us. It shows the power of him. He can create so much stuff that we can't even understand. So why do we think that we can have a better understanding than him for the course of history? We think that we can judge him for what he's doing, like we know better than him? Think about that for a second. God's creating all this stuff that is like, like we still cannot understand even 1% of the creation around us. God does this easily. He created all of this easily. Trust me, he has more understanding than you. You gotta humble yourself in that area. So God, now we go back to this example. Let's say that the Holocaust now inspires our current generation to act quicker when these genocides are going to happen. Like for example, right now we see genocides happen in China. We see genocides happen in uh, Myanmar, in so many different nations they're happening, right? What if the Holocaust, which was free will created, God can allow this, that, that event of the Holocaust, He can allow it to happen so that we today can be inspired to save tens of millions in the future because God can turn the evil into good. And in the Nova Effect video by Pursuit of Wonder, he kind of explained this in a sense. Uh, indirectly without like mentioning God but I'll basically go over what he was saying in that so someone is born with cancer this young girl and so on the outside that seems like oh this is so bad this person has cancer and it is inherently bad she she is sick she is going to die earlier than she would from dying of you know old age right but then this motivates her to spend her whole life getting into medicine and from there she is able to create a cure for this cancer that she has so now we see oh this bad was turned to good because now tens of thousands if not millions are going to be saved from her works and her works were inspired by her having cancer originally they're what motivated her to make this medicine right so this is all good now, but then that medicine helps a kid who had cancer, it helps him be all healthy. And he grows up to become a dictator that ends up killing tens of millions of people. Now, again, we have a bad circumstance that is from a good circumstance, but God can again turn this bad into greatness. So what does he do? He allows it to happen. He allows this dictator to take over because he has the free will to do so. This dictator will be judged at the end of the time. And these innocent people, if they remain faithful in Jesus, they will prevail and go into heaven, right? So the heaven for eternity, that outweighs the true things that they had to go through with the killings, right? So God allows this dictator's free will to prevail 
and therefore tens of millions are killed. But one of those people who are killed is this girl's parents, a, a different girl that is. And she now is seeing that the world really isn't doing too good if people like this come out on top. So what she wants to do is she wants to try and discover like multi multi-planetary travel basically to escape the world when things like this happens, when people are killing all these all these others and you know having these uh, genocides pretty much. So she wants to save everyone from this. So what she does, she works out her whole life to be just focused on multi-planetary travel. So now she's able to do that. Humanity is traveling to multiple planets and we're all good in that regard. World War III happens and the world goes kaboom because of all the nuclear stuff. So the remaining people on Earth, the people that didn't go multi-planetary, the four billion, let's say, they're all dead. But this woman ended up saving half of humanity, which was the other four billion. So this dictator killed tens of millions, but from that, this person was motivated to go multi-planetary and therefore she was able to save four billion. So God can always make good from evil. And I know, and I know, I know, trust me, I know that it is hard to see that with the Holocaust and with something that bad and being like, well, is six million lives like, you know, how, how can he make something good from that? But it's just a limiting of our understanding that is holding us back. God knows what he is doing. He created all of this after all. So humble yourself and know that God, he already has everything planned out. He knows the course of history. So he's going to intervene when he has to, but he is not going to mess up that faith-based system. And at the end of the day, he can always make the good from the bad. So hopefully that has answered your question. And if you still have any more questions on God or any questions about self-improvement, please let me know down below in the comments section and I'll respond to every single comment and I'll try and make a video on any suggestions that you have for any videos. With that being said, feel free to check out the rest of my channel as I have a bunch of content relating to God and self-improvement. With that being said, thank you for watching. Hope that this helped. I'm out. Be well. Peace.